policy planning. And for me, those were largely tied to getting governments to think differently about uh, their relationship between the public and private sector and how the public and private sector could work together uh, collaboratively to increase tourism. I started my career at a time when tourism was beginning to uh, appear on the uh, North American landscape as a major economic force. Uh, it was a time when uh, supply was outstripped by demand. It was a time when um, new and innovative things were happening to help the baby boomer class move into uh, tourism, helping the emergence of one of uh, the most important sectors of the tourism economy in North America, and that was the ski industry. Uh, skiing was developing and uh, it was kind of uh, by the seat of their pants. And uh, I, as an, as an, with an interest myself in skiing, uh, got quite involved with industry and, and government in looking at ways to uh, encourage uh, a more sophisticated approach to uh, delivering this new product. And so I, I spent a lot of time um, developing methodologies to find out about what skiers like, what their preferences were, what their behaviors were. Um, the methods were almost as important as the outcomes, but the, both sides were pretty important at the time because it basically set the, the first set of methods for exploring this new group of travelers. It took me through various things, from first of all just trying to learn a little bit about them as why they were skiing, uh, to probably the more important part which was looking at why certain people weren't skiing or why they were dropping out and uh, what had to be done to change the nature of the tourism experience skiing uh, to make it a more interesting and uh, inclusive sport because for the longest time skiing was very much a, an inclusionary kind of exclusionary kind of thing. It was white people, particularly white males, who uh, took part in it and uh, uh, there was a big push to expand the range of travelers who might ski. So we spent a lot of time uh, uh, entering a new field which was really resort development, the planning of resorts to deal largely with the fact that uh, more and more skiers uh, were looking for places to stay in and around the mountain and what could be done, what could be designed these, these places around the mountain. So I spent, I worked on it for an awful long time in uh, different parts of the world uh, trying to help develop uh, concepts of what could happen off the mountain for skiers. And uh, that took me through everything from uh, looking at land use plans uh, for these places, looking at the mix of businesses and services that would have to be provided, to uh, looking at factors such as sustainability and limiting growth in these areas. And uh, a whole variety of projects led to policy uh, decisions about how the resorts we see today are, are formed. And then one that I, I, I've particularly enjoyed I uh, also came out of uh, skiing somehow. Um, when we started working on the planning of resorts, an awful lot of it was on public lands. And those public lands were controlled by the governments, and the governments had uh, new stakeholders who were interested in, in um, being involved as ski areas became successful. Other people thought, well, we'd like to be involved with the businesses as well. And that involved working with Aboriginal people because in my part of the world, Canada, and in fact in most parts of the world, the cultural minorities are pushed to the side for big development. And so I spent a, a lot of my career to this day helping Aboriginal people or trying to help Aboriginal people and uh, developers and governments learn to work with one another. And so that has spawned the growth of uh, that a lot, a lot of the work for me involved trying to find them the, the rationale well, for why uh, public agencies, why developers, and how Aboriginal people could work together. Uh, and uh, it's been a very, very uh, rewarding part of my uh, career because, in fact, uh, you can make big changes with small numbers of people if you. Uh, 
if you get their trust and are able to work closely with them. So uh, three parts that are integrated, uh, started looking at skiing, uh, turned from looking what was happening on the hill to looking what was happening at the bottom of the hill uh, to then looking at well who controls what happens at the bottom of the hill. And that's uh, involved the Aboriginal people. Now, the hill for Aboriginal people is much bigger than, or the bottom of the hill for Aboriginal people is much bigger than it was a few years ago because laws are making it easier for them to become involved in an awful lot of what goes on. Hmm.